She smiled. I began to cry. In an instant, I knew it was her. Last year, when she and I first met, the desperation of her village stained her young face. This year, arriving in her village on my bike, her smile was full of life. The difference was now her village has safe access to clean water. She remembered me. I will never forget her. This film is dedicated to a little girl in Ethiopia. Cheers. So the mission today, this is our final pack. Lay out all the gear. This here you can see that USB port. As my tire turns, as the wheel turns, creates power and charges my gadget. So uh, pump. The kit that I'm wearing, or will be wearing, I've got two sets of kit. When we get to uh, Arba Minch in southern Ethiopia, uh, we're gonna walk out of that airport build up the bike, pack the bike at the airport and start riding. This will hang right there. And then you'll turn this stuff on. And oh yeah, yeah, I'll turn all that on when we get up there. Cool. All right. Well, I'm ready. Okay. The first thing, you know, the request came from the community. Then that request uh, approved by government. Then hopes entering, make assessment and survey. Is that feasible? Is that feasible? And the second is needy. Needy. Is that needy? And there is water, you know, hopefully specialized by you know, our capacity or the gravity system. So this is safe. So life is easy. Because of waterborne disease, this part of Ethiopia is among the deadliest places in the world for children. Shara is a lucky village. Today, the school principal's issue is class size. He has too many students and not enough teachers, but it hasn't always been this way. Before his school had safe access to clean water, life in Shara was different. It was desperate. Of those children fortunate enough to go to school, half never made it to the end of the year. The burden of a constant effort to gather water and the dire consequences of waterborne disease made the prospect of school secondary to a family's survival. Not only does safe access to clean water save lives, it gives children their first genuine opportunity to go to school. Now the children of Shara play freely in the schoolyard, just like yours and mine. I am good, how are you? Going on a bike ride. Ethiopia is beautiful. Ethiopians are beautiful, but the terrain is unforgiving. There is no refuge. The nearest bike shop is a few countries away. Between the heat, the elevation, the grade, and the roads themselves, each day's journey took me to my physical limits.
Doors de Belly, I arrived exhausted and filthy. I was grateful to have safe access to clean water. With the locals watching, I bathed. Waterborne diseases combine with the complete lack of sanitary conditions in a deadly way. Safe access to clean water means little unless the long-standing sanitation habits in the villages improve. In a place where people relieve themselves freely <laughs> and anywhere, you can appreciate teaching sanitary practices is as much an exercise in education as it is an effort to change long-standing habits. To build the water infrastructure is straightforward. Wow. To encourage a village to adapt in positive and sustainable ways takes time and commitment. It's the little things, properly washing hands and dishes, using and maintaining pit latrines, safe cooking and eating practices. Families fortunate enough to have a cow often sleep with it in their hut. Villagers are learning that this too must change if the full social and economic opportunity that water offers is to be realized. As an adventurer, the bike has always been the purest way for me to discover people and places. The saddle is a vulnerable place to be, particularly in this part of the world. It is this vulnerability that gives me the opportunity to intensely discover all that is around me. Nobody has explored this part of the world on a bike. I decided to do it on a fat bike. When loaded up with gear, this fat bike was 70 pounds. Hardly efficient, but tough and capable. In the developing world, the water issue is one to which humanity owes women a solution once and for all. It is the responsibility of women and girls to fetch water. In the mountainous terrain, the walk to a safe water source can take many hours. It's dangerous. The existence of women and girls is governed by water. They are either burdened by fetching it in containers or set free by safe access to it in their village. If women and girls, half the population, are no longer required to fetch water on a constant basis, what next? Bring them together, empower them, educate them, set them free. Understanding the connection between women and water is fundamental to realizing that women hold the key to sustainable social and economic change. Yeah. <laughs> of course I was afraid to set out on this adventure. But I believe if you can get over fear and explore, you will be given a gift. The gift is an experience. And in that experience somewhere, there is a lesson and an invite for you to make a choice. You can allow yourself to be changed by that lesson or not, one or the other. Should you decide to change, humanity is better off. Should you decide not to change, you have let humanity down. Go explore. Be uncomfortable. Be nervous. Be afraid. Hurt. Cry. Just go. And when you go, let it change you. The story does not end when the water infrastructure is built. Safe access to clean water will abruptly change the course of history in a village. Community mobilizing teams will stay engaged with villages for upwards of two years. They ensure children go to school, sanitation habits change, and women's groups succeed. The community mobilizers also work to train those that will maintain the water infrastructure itself. This is the road to Saite. 
The villagers in Saite, using only hand tools, tore through mountains and the side of a ridge to build a 17-kilometer road connecting their remote community to progress. It hardly exists. It's on no map. The road came first, only because the people in Saite knew the water would come second. 1,250 people from Saite's population of 6,500 worked for six months on the construction of the road and for one year immediately following on the construction of the sprawling water infrastructure project. This effort is testimony in the undeveloped world that, with support from the international community, a village of a few thousand people can accomplish remarkable things. If the story of the road to Saite does not convey the power of water, then I don't know what does. These villagers quite literally moved a mountain and in doing so, unknowingly, gave me the most profound and rewarding bike ride of my life. The road to Saite is of no significance, unless you live in the village or you're an adventure cyclist. Thank you. 